guys, today we are doing five checks that you need to check before signing off a unit as competent. And we're going to be tackling these from the trainer perspective and from the admin perspective. Okay, so let's go. Number one, first thing you need to do, have all of the questions actually been answered? Now, if you're working with a student management system like Accelerate, the system will actually tell you if you are missing anything. However, if you are dealing in hard copies or you're dealing with another learner management system, you may not, you may have to be checking these things manually. So please check to make sure that every question has been answered, that it has been answered reasonably, okay? And that it has been actually like ticked to make sure that it's showing that it's actually been marked. Now, admin, this is a really easy check for you. You can check to make sure that everything has been answered and you can check to make sure that there is a tick to make sure that it has actually been marked. Trainers and assessors, this is a really good chance for you to actually reflect back on your marking guides. Again, if you're using a student management system like Accelerate, the benchmark response will be right next to your learner's response. However, if you're not dealing with a system like that, get out the marking guide and just as a matter of good practice on occasion, go through and have your marking guide next to your student assessment and make sure that you understand the breadth and the depth Okay, and that is basically the types of examples that are expected to be provided and the amount of information that is expected to be provided in order to provide a compliant response in line with your marking guide and your mapping guide. Okay, this is one of the things that should be happening when your teams are doing validation, but it's good practice for you guys as trainers as well. If you're seeing a massive disparity between a student's response that you believe is correct and what's in the marking guide, it's a good opportunity for you to bring it to your curriculum development team and provide some feedback to them, some constructive feedback to them. All right, so that's number one. Have all the questions been answered? Two, all the observations, have they been ticked? Okay, have we actually checked off all the observations, have actually been observed? Ideally, there's a comment in there. Okay, and that's included in there as well. Again, admin, this is a really easy thing for you guys to check and double check for the trainers. We are all human, we do make mistakes, but make sure that all of those things have been checked off. Three is the dates. Okay, so with the dates, what we wanna be making sure is that there is a very clear competency date for the unit. Generally, it is the date that the last assessment, and generally that's the practical, was completed. Okay, and the date that the last assessment was completed and signed off by the supervisor is the date that the unit gets deemed competent. Okay, for state funding contracts, this may clearly be outlined in what something like an assessment summary, but what we wanna be making sure is, is that those observations are clearly there uh, and that there is a clear end date on which you are going to be resulting that unit as competent. If there are three different dates, so like you've got one date signed by the trainer, one date signed by the supervisor, one date signed by the um, by the student, then what you want to be doing is you want to be clarifying which date it should be that is getting signed off, and you can do that with your management or your compliance uh, your compliance manager. Okay. Two is we want to make sure that all the signatures are there. In most important, we want to make sure the student signature is there. And we want to make sure the assessor's signature is there. If those signatures are missing, you cannot issue the unit as competent. If you are doing it under a funded state model, you may also require the workplace signature as well. Under the Queensland contract, under apprenticeships in WA, um, I think in New South Wales, it might be, might be required as well. You have to have the employer's verification that competency can be achieved under several of the state funding contract requirements. So make sure that you have that as well where it is relevant, okay? Um, chasing signatures after the fact, if you miss this, if you pick up on missing this as admin and it gets through, it can actually result in a loss of funding. So it is very, very important that you are checking to make sure all those signatures are there, all those dates are correct, so that when you report that information to the State Department, you know you're, you're doing it correctly. And then the last one is any attachments that are required, okay? So this might be like a report, this might be a job card, this might be a, uh, a separate incident form or something along those lines. Basically, what you wanna make sure is you need to understand, as a trainer, you should understand everything that is required for that unit. Under sufficiency, it says the assessor is assured there is a relevant um, 
this, the assessor is assured that there is a sufficient quality, quantity, and relevance of assessment evidence. So if the assessment has been designed, you've got to collect evidence in the form of forms, reports, et cetera. It is your responsibility to make sure that all of that information is in there together. Admin, what you want to make sure is that it's very clear what is required for each unit of competency, okay? So work with your curriculum developers, work with your managers so that you can very clearly see and understand what documents I should have before I result that unit as competent in my student management system. Is it just a learner's guide? Is it a learner's guide and an observation? Is it a learner's guide and a report? Is it a learner's guide and, you know, um, a form? Okay, is it a whole combination of those things? Is the theory in, in um, a student management system and the practical is in hard copy? So what you need to understand is, is what you need to be checking for. You are the last line of defense. Make sure that you know that everything is there when you result that unit as competent. You can't just go off what your assessor says. Um, you've got to make sure that it's following a process. Okay, so that's it from me. Five things, all questions answered and marked for breadth and depth observations ticked, um, any attachments that should be along with those observations, forms, et cetera, are there. Dates are clearly correct for what the competency end date is and everyone's signatures are on there. Guys, if you are doing all of these things, then you are probably gonna get through your audit because everything should be in there if you're working with people who are designing semi-decent assessments and you're working with trainers who are making sure that they collect all of their evidence. This is how we build a quality practice RTO. Hope this, you found this helpful. If you do, please like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Lauren Hollows for NOI Education Services.